it is Tuesday once again, my lovely people, so that means it's time for Back the Fox once again to bring you some complaints. Or at least, for this week's <laughs> installation. Last week, I talked to you guys about some things about some customers that make me angry. Now, I have plenty, plenty, plenty of reasons to be pissed off at customers 98% of the time. Now, some of these things I'm about to discuss now, granted, yes, they are more things that make me angry, but they're also things that confuse the ever-loving hell out of me. And no, I don't just mean things like, you know, why do you, you know, why do you carve things into the bathrooms and stuff that I covered last week? No, this is, this is more along the lines of just things that kind of make me scratch my head and go, why? 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 What, what possessed you to do this? Because last night I had one of these incidents. I'm just sitting there, minding my own business, doing my task, doing my work. And suddenly, out of my blind spot, there comes a customer. Nothing new for, you know, late at night. Customers, they happen. This man was apparently looking for some tissue paper. Toilet tissue. You know, th there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Gotta have a little ass wipe to get rid of your, you know, nasty. So, it's perfectly fine if you have to find that stuff. Here's what bothers me. I'm perfectly okay and down with customers asking me where things are, but that's about as far as I like to go with talking to the customer. When the customer decides to start making banter with me, it gets annoying, but it's not too terrible. This guy, on the other hand, was peeking high on the freakometer, like really seriously weirding me the fuck out. And quite frankly, I don't deal well with people like that because, you know, I'm, I'm here to do my job. I'm not here to talk to you. I mean, you're not saying anything that's interesting to me. In fact, what you're doing is creeping me out. Because this guy was just twitchy. He had that weird, I haven't bathed in five days kind of smell to him. You know, soured milk and alcohol. And to be frank, this guy creeped me out to no end. Of course, I keep saying creeped out. I think you're all getting the point. But what's the point? What's the point? Shut up, Rack. You're not making sense. Make your point. Okay, my point is this. Customers, why? Why? Do you find it necessary to talk to some of us? I mean, okay, I, I understand you guys want to be friendly. Hey, that's understandable. I'm down with that. I'm cool. Well, I'm not cool, but, you know, I'm cool with talking to people. I'm cool with making friends. I like making friends. Just not with people who are going to tell me shit I don't want to fucking hear. Of course, I already know an easy, uh, easy problem with this. Well, how do you know if what they're going to say is going to be something you don't want to hear until they say it? Okay, valid, valid. But at the same time, most of the people around here don't have anything really fantastic or interesting to say. Not that I understand most of what these people say. Anyway, I don't have a Espanol. And before any of you start trying to say, Ow, that's racist. You're being racist. It's not racist, folks. It's just the truth. I don't speak Spanish. Nobody around here seems to speak anything but. Of course, when you're this close to the border, that's not surprising. Which brings me to something else that irritates me to no end. Now, okay, um, if I were to move to France and get a job, I'm pretty sure I would be expected to learn French. If I were to move to Germany and try to get a job, I'm pretty damn sure they would want me to learn German. Same thing if I moved to Japan or China or Taiwan or anywhere. They would want me to learn the languages there before I could get a job. Now, this is my, my, my query. If you're going to work in America, does it, does, it, does, it, does it seem a little unfair at all that you should be expected to learn English so at the very least you could be able to communicate with the people that you work with? I mean, okay, I can understand. Not every customer is going to speak Spanish. Granted, not every associate should be expected to learn Spanish to communicate with the customers. Because, you know, most of the time there's a Hispanic-speaking you know, Hispanic associate on hand nearby that can do that for you. But at the same time, it's kind of difficult when you have associates who only speak Spanish and don't understand English. Correct me if I'm wrong, but generally in places like Walmart, you're supposed to speak English. You know, that's generally one of the qualifications for working there. When you're on the sales floor, you are expected to speak English. And the big problem I have with this is that, lo and behold, hardly any of them do. They get away with it. Not saying that it's a crime or anything, it's just it frustrates me to no end. When I have to work with one of these people, I need to communicate with them, and I need to stop and look for somebody to translate to them that I need assistance doing this or that. I mean, seriously, though, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, I have nothing against them speaking their language, just... It makes for a very difficult work situation, that's all. I mean, if, you're, if I'm gonna work over there, you'd expect me to learn the language. If you're gonna work over here, please, come on. It's a common courtesy. Uh, let's see. Since we're fraying the, the nary line on uh, potential racism here, let's divert to another topic. Okay. Sometimes you might go into a Walmart store and see, you know, a bunch of baskets lined up, maybe. Yeah, this is a good situation to talk about because it's happened last night. 
Um, you may see like a line of baskets or a series of pallets blocking something off so you can't get past it, and you wonder why is that there? Okay, let me explain something. Our maintenance team has to keep the floors waxed. They have to keep it looking shiny and polished. Otherwise, the ma uh, uh, maintenance, yes, the maintenance. The management gets pissed. Everybody gets yelled at. God damn it, I'm sucking today. But, you know, management will get angry. People will get yelled at. It's unfair all around. But basically, the reason why those baskets are put there is because that wax just so happens to be extremely slick and slippery. Which means that if your feet touch it, you have the odds of slip sliding across the floor, potentially cracking your skull open and emptying the contents of your head onto the freshly waxed floor. I'm pretty sure it's not something you want to add to your list of what I did today. Not only that, we don't want to have to deal with that shit. Nothing personal for your safety and all that, but some of y'all are completely fucking stupid, and I'm not going to be nice about it either. You people, some of you people happen to have the IQ of just an alcoholic sperm, okay? And it makes me sad when I see these customers just waltz right in, see a line of carts, and go... Fuck it, I'm crossing this anyway, you can't stop me. Which is ironic, because, huh, yes, we can, actually. We can kick your ass right out of the fucking store if you cause too much of a problem. But, I mean, what is so difficult to understand about a barricade? It's like these people have a process in their brain that just shuts down and goes, What? What? Warning? I, I don't understand. What? What? Is it the lemon gene? Is that it? It's the lemon gene. I'm gonna, give it, I'm gonna say it's the lemon gene. You know, that little thing that tells you, Hey, you can do this, even though there's a high chance it'll fucking kill you. And furthermore, the people who get pissed off at you when you're trying to do something for their own good? What the fuck is that all about? I mean, seriously here. If somebody just told you, you know, if somebody just stopped you from walking in front of a car that was about to plow you down, would you get pissed off at them? I mean, honestly, would you get pissed off at somebody for pushing you out of the way of an oncoming truck? You know, would you get pissed off at somebody for, you know, grabbing the steering wheel and veering you away from the edge of the cliff? I mean, do you think we get any sort of appreciation at all for that? Fuck no, we don't. Most of the time, the customers will sit there and go, Oh, you can't tell me what to do. That's, you're, I'm the customer. Ah, oh, I am so important. I'm self-important. It's just, you know, it's like, you people deserve what happens to you. I swear if it were up to me, I'd move the car aside and go, Go right ahead. You don't want to listen. You don't want to see the sign that says, Don't cross. It's just like, don't put your hands in the cage. You don't want to put your hands in the cage. There's a grabbing his grizzly bear in there. Oh, but yes, you do want to put your hand in the cage because you're fucking stupid. You're the person who's lowest on the gene chain. Okay, fine. I get it. Enjoy. You make Darwin proud. Unfortunately, we can't do this. Because, God forbid, the customer hurt themselves. Shame. For shame. We have to pay their hospital bill. Which is another ludicrous thing on its own. I'm sorry, but if a customer gets hurt because of their own ignorance, you deserve to get hurt. God, I've been rambling about them for a while now. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else could I gripe about? One thing I can't understand is the management happen. Most management at Walmart stores think that their associates are like superpowered gods or something. You know, we are not from Olympus. We cannot do all of these things that you expect us to. And by that, I'm not saying that we're incompetent and we don't know what we're doing. Trust me, a lot of us do know how to do our jobs. I'm talking about the damn management who thinks, Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Let's have this person try to do three hours worth of work in two. Well, no, even that's, con even that's reasonably understandable. But no, 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 more like five hours worth of work in three. That's bullshit, especially when they force you to work alone. Do they apologize? Do they understand that, hey, I'm human, I can't do all of this? No. No, they do not. Instead, they yell. They yell, they gripe, they write you up. That's one thing I can't understand at all. I mean, why punish us for something that we have no power over? And some people might disagree with me. They might say, oh, that just means you need to work faster. Okay, asshole, I need to work faster? You do my fucking job. Let's see how much faster I have to work. Come on, you do my job, okay? Of course, most people think, oh, a monkey could do a Walmart associate's job. Really? A monkey? <laughs> so I take it your uh, IQ matches that of your shoe size? Wonderful, wonderful little low double-digit numbers? Because, you know, most of the time, management puts way, way too heavy a workload on the associates. Granted, there are some associates that I wouldn't mind seeing suffer. But then again, I think that's anybody at any workplace. We want to see some of these people just writhe. Wow, I'm really getting sidetracked here. I'm supposed to be complaining about customers. Now I'm talking about the management. I'm talking about all sorts of awkward, weird shit. Let's see, stuff that makes me angry about the customers. You know, to be honest, I can't really complain that much about customers. I can tell you what makes me happy about customers. I mean, aside from the fact that you guys buy the shit that helps me keep money in my wallet. Sometimes you'll get customers that understand where things are. They know where it is. You know, they don't do this whole entire, I'm going to sit in front of the aisle and stare like it's a fucking art gallery. 
Oh wait, that's something that makes me mad. Yes, yeah, something I completely forgot about. Customers who just seem to sit and stare. Okay, um, maybe I'm old fashioned, but when I was, I remember when I was younger, I was growing up, when my mother would go grocery shopping, we usually had this thing called a list. Does nobody make a grocery shopping list anymore? I mean, is it, is it, is the concept non-existent of making a list of stuff you know you need to get before you go shopping? Because, as far as I can tell, no. It doesn't happen anymore. I see these customers just waltz into the store, and what do they do? They stare. They stare like this is a art gallery. They stare like we're holding some sort of special. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, they stare like we're just kind of like, like everything you're not supposed to buy it. You're just supposed to look at it. Now, honestly, I don't understand. I mean, if you want to buy something, for God's sake, buy it. Pick it up, put it in your cart, put your, you know, ferry your basket away, go elsewhere, go to the registers, you know where they are, and buy your food, buy your drinks, buy whatever, buy whatever. You know, I don't care. Don't stand there and wonder, like, like it's some ancient puzzle that will solve itself if you stare long enough. You know, like if you, if you hold your shopping cart in the right place at the right time, when the light from the skylight is coming in just right, it will reveal a secret beam showing a treasure map to Blackbeard's, you know, loot. Honestly, I mean, what's the point? Go in, buy your stuff, get out. Most of the time, people don't like spending their time in Walmart anyway, or any store for that matter. I mean, come on. When you're a little kid and you're stuck inside of a conven convenience store, eh, when you're stuck inside of a retail store, doesn't it piss you off just a little bit when you're in there for far too long? And you know what I mean by far too long. Like, you know, when you can notice the passing of time outside of the skylights. When you can swear it was brighter outside when you came in. When you get direly hungry and you know that if you don't leave soon, you're going to starve. Honestly, I, I feel sorry for kids in retail stores. I really do. I hate them, but, you know, I can kind of understand the grounds that they stand on for, you know, why kids act rambunctious when they're inside of a store. Because they're bored out of their minds. Who can blame them? Retail stores are boring places unless they have an arcade. But even then, if you don't have quarters, what's the point? Even then, most of the time, most parents won't let the kids into the arcade because it's a distraction. That's the point! It's a distraction! Let the kid be distracted! For God's sake, all you're doing is boring the poor kid to death. Um... Yeah, how many, how many talkers on YouTube do you hear that will actually go, um... Most of the time, they have this shit all written down and ready. Not me, this is off the cuff. This is as it comes out of my mouth. Alright, I'll stop that. But no, um... For the most part, I love you customers. Some of you people can come up with some of the most interesting stories ever. Oh wait, no I don't. I don't like talking to you customers. Most of you customers don't know how to shut the hell up. But, a lot of you... Well, no, I, I'm not gonna say a lot of you or even most of you, because that's, that's unfair. You, not all of you are that bad. I take it back, I'm sorry. And I suck again. Have a sip of drink. But no, not all customers are bad. Not all customers are bad, just like not all kids are terrible. It would be a cold day in hell when I say that a kid was great in a Walmart store, however. Believe me, I hold a lot of resentment towards children in retail. Children plus retail don't mix, unless you're buying that kid a Christmas present or a birthday present. In which case, please, parents, keep your eyes on your children. I don't care how old they are. Because as bad as the little ones can be, the older ones can be just as bad, if not worse. What do you mean by worse? By worse, I mean at least little kids only like to relocate toys and things like that, whereas the older ones like to ride around the store on the skateboards. Some of you parents could do really well by giving your children a good old-fashioned lesson in discipline. I don't know, I mean... Not all kids are like that. Like I said, not all kids are like that. There have been a few times where the kid just stays there quiet, or falls asleep, or whatever. Though I still have to deal with their fucking loin spawn crying and whining when they bring it to the store at 3.30 in the morning. Ugh, and so many parents wonder why their children grow up rebellious and fucking rude as hell. I don't know though, I mean, come on, come on, no customers can be bad, Mac, no customers can be that terrible. I'll, I'll, I'll admit, I've had a few choice customers that aren't bad, in fact, I like seeing them when they come in. They're good company to talk to because, well, actually, they're not really customers, they are former employees. <laughs> some of you may be wondering, well, how can a former employee be any, great, any better? Well, for one, they're not a screaming toddler. Two, they're not a complete incompetent moron who doesn't know where anything is. Three, they aren't going to be a rude douchebag and steal your shopping cart when you're not looking. Haha, <laughs> I bet you thought I was going to say that one, but no, that happened to me last night too. Believe me, there's one thing I can't stand, it, and as you already know, that's when customers take my shopping carts. It makes no sense to me. More so when they dump everything out to put their stuff in it. That will win you a grand certified prize of me taking your shit out of your cart, throwing it on the floor, and telling you to go fuck yourself. Don't think I'll do it, bet me. You know, this has been a really, really, really awkward episode. I guess it's because my heart, my ticker is kind of doing really bad. Last night, I kind of had a panic attack, and uh, I'm not feeling too good. 
So I'm sorry if this sounds a little awkward, a little. But uh, you know, bear with me. Bear with me. It's not always as bad. So um, yeah. If anybody, anybody who's watching these and makes it this far, though I may want to put this in the, you know, in the comments in the comment section as well, so y'all can see it there if you don't want to watch the entirety of the video. Uh, if y'all want to see me play something different other than Donkey Kong Country 2, hey, be sure to let me know in the comments, you know. Um, so long as it's, you know, NES or SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, so on and so forth, you know, old console stuff, you know, if it's old hat, hey, you know, shit, let me know. Let me know and I'll consider giving it a play and who knows? <laughs> Hello, even credit y'all. Why do I keep saying y'all? I'm not Southern, I'm from fucking California. Well, I was from California. Fuck off, Cleaver. Ah, ah. No, but, uh, anyway. If anybody has any requests for games and such, like I just said, you know, just drop me a note. Drop me, you know, a comment. However you wish to deliver it. Also, be sure to, you know, like. You know, like, favorite, subscribe. And, you know, I'll, I'll be making more of these, whether or not, one way or the other. But at least it helps me know that you guys are actually watching what I'm doing. So, you know, I have inspiration to keep going. Because, you know, it really helps my self-esteem. Shoes. Anyway, this has been Back Fox. It's Tuesday. I have too much time on my hands, and now it is time for me to go get a drink, a bath, and a nap. Peace.